Welcome to our online church service today. We're so glad to have every single one of you tuning in with us. We pray that you will be tremendously blessed. To our Urban Light Church family, we miss every single one of you. and We can't, we can't wait to see you in the near future. Let's lean in into the presence of God as we worship together with our creative team. Stop. 
you more than enough for us in every season. Our living hope and our saviour, we just lean on you and we welcome your presence. As we're in this attitude of worship, I just have this prayer request in my hand. Won't you lean in with us as an online church family as we bring this prayer request before God? Whatever you trust in God this morning, whatever the need, whatever the hearts are, know that our God is the way maker. So let us pray together as an online family. Let us join our faith this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you and we honor you and we thank you, my God. Thank you for this new day, my God, that joy comes in the morning, my God, that we can proclaim victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, but we ask for those that are trusting you for healing in their bodies, those that are looking for you to set them free from debt, my God, those that are trusting you for increase in their finances, businesses, my God, those that are trusting you for new vehicles and homes, my God. We know that you're a way maker, promise keeper, my God, and we call it done in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word is yes and amen, mighty God. So we just honor you and glorify your name, my God. Even those that are tra- battling with addiction, my God. Proud Father God, I pray that you're a God of second chances. You're a God of the turnaround, my God. You're a God of the impossible, and you love us, my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bridging the gap between us and the Father. Thank you by, the, for your, by your blood that we are washed white as snow, my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that by your blood that we are made righteous again in the name of Jesus. We thank you, and we worship you, and we honor and glorify, and we lift your mighty name above every other name. In Jesus' name we ask us. With thank thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning to our online church family. We're so glad that we can bring church to you online. Do stay tuned as we bring you a powerful and dynamic word by our senior pastor. God bless. 
Good morning, church. We're going to continue with our worship through our giving this morning. So would you turn with me to the book of Malachi, and we're going to read from chapter 3, from verse 10 to 11. And it says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Wow, that's a lot to take in. Well, basically God is saying that when we bring our tithe into his house, he will do three things. Number one is that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a financial blessing in our lives to where there won't be room enough to receive it or to contain it. Number two is that he will rebuke the devourer of your, for your sake, meaning that he will protect you and he will protect your finances. And number three is that he will bless the land and the nations will call you blessed, meaning your church, your community, and your city. So church, when we tithe, God pours out a threefold blessing upon our lives, and all we have to do is just receive it. Our Urban Light Church banking details are going to come up on your screen, and you can give via EFT or via cash deposited at the bank. Why don't you get your giving ready, and we're going to pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we just honor you and we just thank you that we get to give this morning. Father, that we get to bring the tithe into your house. Father, your word says that you would pour out a threefold blessing, Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you for that in faith this morning. Thank you for your provision in our lives. Thank you, Father, for meeting with our every need. I pray that you would bless every seed sown this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church, for your giving this morning. If you just joined us today, I want to welcome you, and I really pray that you will be blessed today. We're going to get straight into God's Word this morning. If you have your Bibles, won't you turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Romans 8 and verse 26. It says here, and in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings, yet He also understands the desires of the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us. His holy ones in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven to, together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are His lovers who have been called to fulfill His designed purpose. I want to speak to you today for a few moments from the thought the Holy Spirit in us because I really believe that in the season that we need the Holy Spirit God has sent the Holy Spirit Jesus came on planet earth and before he could go he gave his disciples the promise of the Holy Spirit he told his disciples that they need to go and they need to wait until the Holy Spirit comes and when the Holy Spirit comes they will be empowered he sent the Holy Spirit to be our encourager he sent the Holy Spirit to empower us he sent the Holy Spirit as our helper 
And so God sent His Holy Spirit. And I really believe that in this season, we need the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that the Holy Spirit is there to empower every single one of us. The Holy Spirit is there to guide us. The Holy Spirit is there to lead us. We need the Holy Spirit's leading in the season. I know that we are in a season where it's difficult to navigate because we have not experienced a pandemic like this. We have not experienced crisis like this. We have not experienced challenges like we have been experiencing. And so I really believe that we need the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We need the direction of the Holy Spirit in our lives. There are times in our lives, and he says here in the scripture, there are times when we don't know how to pray. I'm sure you feel like that sometimes. You just don't know how to pray. You, there aren't words to come, uh, come out, out of your mouth to understand and to know what to pray. Those are the times where the Bible says here, the author tells us that the Holy Spirit starts to intercede on our behalf. I'm not talking about operating from a level or a place of prayerlessness. I'm talking about where you do pray. I'm talking about where you do turn to God. But they, there are moments in our journey and moments when we just don't know or don't have the words to pray. This is when the Holy Spirit steps in and He starts to intercede on your behalf and my behalf. There are times where we feel like we don't know which way to turn. There are times where we feel like there is devastation around us. We feel like like there is turmoil around us. We feel like there is a struggle around us, like we are in a storm. But that's a time when we don't know how to pray, that we have the Holy Spirit who prays and intercedes on our behalf. The Holy Spirit takes hold of our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit, you know, uh, on social media, I've been seeing people been posting. They've been feeling discouraged. They've been feeling weak. They've been feeling like they don't know what to do. They've been feeling like they are in a challenge. Uh, you know, people have said to me that they're feeling discouraged. People have said to me, uh, just this week, someone told me that they were feeling very down. And so when I've been, as I've been speaking to people, people have been feeling weak. But I want to encourage you today. The Holy Spirit is there to empower us. The Holy Spirit is there to uplift our spirit. It's so important to understand that when you are exhausted, when you feel like you are overwhelmed and you don't have any words to articulate what you are going through, that the Holy Spirit understands and the Holy Spirit is there for you and I. The Holy Spirit is there to minister to us in a season like that and in a time like that. You see, it's very important to understand that the Holy Spirit, He does not, He does not pray His own agenda. The Holy Spirit does not pray our agenda. But the Holy Spirit prays and intercedes God's agenda for your life. You see, when we pray, when we turn to God, we turn to God with our own agenda. We turn to God with our own words. We turn to God with specifically our needs. But it's very important for us to understand that the Holy Spirit always prays and intercedes God's agenda over our lives. You have to understand that the only way that you can fulfill God's full potential over your life is through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us. You may not know uh, your, loca lo your location. You may not know uh, uh, about your job. You may, not, uh, you, know, you may not have a certainty regarding your job, certainty regarding your finances. You may not know uh, what's coming up in the future. It's very important to understand that the Holy Spirit is there to help you. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you. The Holy Spirit is there to lead you in a season like we are faced with right now. 
You see, you cannot walk in God's full potential for your life without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit empowering you and I. The Holy Spirit is all about Jesus. The Holy Spirit is all about revealing Jesus in our lives. The Holy Spirit is always about pointing us to Jesus. He's not there for himself. He's not there to point us to himself, but he's there to point us to Jesus and to the love of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is our greatest counselor. If you ever need counseling, the Holy Spirit is your greatest counselor. Whatever you're going through right now, you may be uh, feeling uh, very down. You may be feeling discouraged. You may be feeling like your emotions are all over the place. But the Holy Spirit, He is your greatest encourager. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be a counselor to us. The Holy Spirit to be there to empower us, to give us strength. The Holy Spirit is there to help us navigate in this journey of life. You see, there are two areas that most of us are impacted with. Actually, all of us are impacted in these two areas. We are impacted in our emotions and we are impacted in our intellect. You see, when it comes to our emotions, what happens is that fear affects our emotions. When it comes to our intellect, the, the one thing, the big thing that affects our intellect is doubt. And so through our emotions, fear impacts our emotions. And through our intellect, doubt impacts our intellect. And so these are two very important parts uh, or important things for us to understand that if there is fear, it's going to impact your emotions. All your emotions inside of you are impacted by fear. You got to understand that even in your intellect, that all your that your intellect, your mind is impacted through doubt. Today, I want to give you three things. I want to help you with three things today that is going to help you understand and realize that the Holy Spirit is there to impact these parts of your life so that you can live in the full potential that God has for your life. Write down the first thing today. The Holy Spirit deals with, write down number one, the Holy Spirit deals with fear. The first thing that the Holy Spirit will deal in your life is fear. I'm so glad today that the Holy Spirit can help me in the area of fear, especially in a season like we're going through right now, especially right now where we find ourselves as a country, where we find ourselves as a nation, where we see that there are so many cases of the virus. There are some areas that are starting to experience the peak of the virus. And so fear can set in when we see that there are so many cases and we see that there are so many deaths and that there are are some debts that are even coming close to home. People that we know, family that we know, relatives that may have passed away. And so when we start to hear about these things, fear can set in. But it's very important to understand that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but we have the Holy Spirit who can help us to deal with fear in this season. The Holy Spirit deals with fear in our lives. If you want to deal with fear in your life, watch what it says here in Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. Romans 5 and verse 5 says this, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The Holy Spirit was given for you and I. The Holy Spirit was given for every single person that's watching right now, that's shooting in right now. The Holy Spirit has been given for us. The Holy Spirit has been given to us because he, he brings the love of God over our lives. The one area and the one way that God deals with fear in our lives, the Holy Spirit brings the love and reveals the love of God in our lives. You see, when you start to have the love of God in your lives, that's how fear gets driven out. Because as you be, experience the love of God in your life and you start to understand and realize who your God is, what happens? Faith starts to arise. 
And when faith arises, faith, it starts to kill the fear in your life. The Holy Spirit has been poured out into your heart and over your heart. The Holy Spirit has been poured over us. You know, I think about uh, when you brush your teeth in the morning. Before you leave and before you put your toothbrush down, what you do is you rinse your toothbrush. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm quite particular about it. And so what I do is I make sure that all the toothpaste is out of uh, my toothbrush. And so I got to pour water over my toothbrush to rinse it. And likewise, the Holy Spirit is poured out over your heart. He's poured out over your heart so that all fear, you can be rinsed of all fear. The Holy Holy Spirit will pour out over your life so that you can, uh, you can start to experience the love of God. And even as you start to experience the love of God, fear starts to leave. Fear starts to, to, to disappear. Fear starts to immediately be released out of your heart. And what happens? Faith arises. As God's love comes upon your heart, you start to experience faith in your life. You see, fear has to do with torment. And the enemy wants to torment you with fear. The enemy wants fear to paralyze us. The enemy knows that if he can get fear to paralyze us, we are stuck. The enemy knows that if fear paralyzes us, that we are, we are in a place where we, are, we can't operate. Because see, fear affects all our emotions. Fear will affect every emotion in your life. And so the enemy knows that if he brings fear inside of us, he can paralyze us. He can, he can start to do a roller coaster with our emotions. You see, one day you are down, the next day you're up, the next day you are down again, and the next day you are down, and the next day you are down, and the next day you are up. And so the enemy, he tries to play on your emotions. And the way that he does it is through fear. But we got to understand that we got the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit brings the love of God in our lives. The Holy Spirit will empower you. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says that God has not given you a spirit of fear. Which means that the Holy Spirit comes, He does not bring fear. He comes to empower us. You see, the Bible tells us in the Old Testament... We see that in the book of Exodus and the beginning of Joshua, we see that God speaks to Joshua as he takes, takes over from Joshua and he starts to lead the children of Israel. God says to Joshua, do not be afraid. The first thing he tells him is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. He says be strong and of good courage. He says, be strong. I want to encourage you today. I want to say to you today, be strong and of good courage. Be courageous today. Be strong in the Holy Spirit. Know that the Holy Spirit is with you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? You have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside of you. With the Holy Spirit in your life, you have power over the enemy. You have authority over over the enemy. The Holy Spirit is in you to empower you so that fear can't paralyze you. You see, the Holy Spirit, what He does, He will bring revelation into your life. He will bring understanding in your life. Why does He do that? It's because once you get revelation of God's Word, faith arises inside of you. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love you see the holy spirit he comes and he overwhelms us he will overwhelm you with the love of god he will come and and you have to understand that that you and i we are made perfect in the love of god God's love comes to perfect you and I. You have to understand when you have God's love upon your life, you will never fear again. Because you understand that God is with you and you understand that God is for you and that God is in control. Even in this pandemic right now, God is in control. 
You have to understand there's nothing on planet earth that is greater than our God. There is no pandemic, there is no virus, there is nothing on planet earth that's more powerful than our God. Our God is more powerful. Our God is greater than any virus. Uh, let me tell you something. You have to understand that the Holy Spirit it dwells inside of you. God sent His Holy Spirit to dwell inside of you and me, which means that wherever we go, Jesus is going with us. That we have the Spirit of Jesus inside of us and because we have the Spirit of Jesus inside of us, it means that we can take authority over every virus. We can take authority over addiction. We can take authority over the enemy. We can take authority when the enemy tries to come and attack our family, our children. The enemy tries to bring addiction in your life. All of a sudden, you are, you, you are experiencing lust in your life. You are experiencing addiction in your life. You, you feeling like you are tempted. Let me tell you something. What happens? You have to understand the Holy Spirit gives you the power to overcome temptation and over every sickness and over any disease that will try and come near your life. I like this very powerful quote by Martin Luther King Jr. He says this, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Such a powerful statement. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. You see, what happens when the Holy Spirit brings God's love into our lives? When the Holy Spirit overwhelms us with God's love, what happens is that every fear must go. Every hate must go. Everything that's not of God will leave your life because the love of God perfects you and I. It overwhelms us. God pours His love into your life so that we can be perfected by His love. You see, sometimes in our lives what happens is that uh, you know, someone will ask you, how are you doing? And you're like, uh, I'm good. No, you're not good. You're actually trying to hide how you're feeling. You're trying to hide that addiction. You're trying to hide your trouble. You're trying to hide the struggle. You see, the thing is that the Holy Spirit, what happens? He will come and He will reveal what you are going through. He will reveal that addiction. He will reveal your struggle. He will reveal that temptation. He will, he will bring conviction in your life. Why does He do that? It's because when God reveals something in your life, He wants to heal it in your life. God will reveal things in your life because because he wants to bring healing in your life. God will reveal an addiction because he wants you to be delivered from that. God will reveal some things in your marriage because he wants your marriage to be healed. God will reveal bitterness in your life. God will reveal offense in your life because he wants you to be delivered from that because he wants you to live in the fullness of what He has for your life. God wants you to live a higher life. God wants you to live in the promises that He has for you. God wants you to experience the fullness that He has for your life. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Aren't you thankful that God will reveal things in your life so that you can be healed from some things? Come on, somebody say amen if you believe that today. God will reveal things in your life because God does not want you to remain the same. God does not want you to live under, under the oppression of the enemy. God does not want you to live and be oppressed by sickness and disease. God does not want you to be oppressed by bitterness and unforgiveness and anger and, uh, and all these other emotions. God wants you to live in the fullness that He has for your life. If you believe that today, come on, somebody say amen. You see, you have to understand God will reveal so that you can be healed. God will reveal and He will heal. And so God doesn't just reveal things for the sake of revealing things. He will reveal because He wants you to live a life full of healing. He's a compassionate God. He's a kind and He's a merciful God. God won't point out things in your life and say, oh well, in an aggressive way, that uh, uh, why are you so fearful? Why are you so angry? God won't just point out things in your life. God is a compassionate God. He wants to fill your life full of His love. He wants to fill your life full of His presence. He wants you to live the higher life that He has called you to live in. So you have to understand that the Holy Spirit, He comes and He wants to deal in the area of fear in your life. Because fear 
will move your emotions. Fear will dictate to your emotions. So what he does, he comes and he deals with fear in your life. You have to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come into my life and, and help me in the area of fear. Holy Spirit, come and remove this fear that's in my life. You see, if you allow him and surrender your life to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come inside your life and he will deal with the area of fear. You know, people look at me and people wonder, how come you're not fearful in this season? Uh, you know, uh, it's not that I have a don't care attitude. It's not that, that uh, you know, I'm being unwise. You see, I understand and I know who my God is. I have faith in my God. And so what happens? I'm not going to allow fear to rule my life. You see, you, I, I've come to a place where I have understood that my God is in control. That whatever I do and whatever I'm faced with in the season, that God is in control. I know it's not easy. And I'm not a person that has my head. Uh, I didn't dig, uh, dig a hole and put my head in the hole and, and just uh, I, I'm like an ostrich. You know, with my whole body exposed. No, I have faith in my God. Because I know if my God is for me, who can be against me? You see, I'm standing on God's word. Yes, I'm taking precautions. Yes, I'm exercising wisdom. But the thing is that I'm not fearful because I know who my God is. And so I want to encourage you today. Know who your God is. Exercise all safety. Exercise all wisdom. Take all precaution. But know that your God is in control. Know that your God is for you. Know that your God is with you. Know that your God is greater. Come on, somebody say amen. And if you believe it today, that your God is greater. He is Yahweh. There is none that can compare to our God. And all things are possible with our God. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. He is your restorer. He will open the blind. He has done it before. He will do it now. He will heal the lame. He will, he will, he will deliver the oppressed and the possessed. That's the God that we serve. He is more than he has made you and I more than a conqueror. Write down number two today. The second thing that God addresses in your life. He doesn't just address fear. But the second thing that he addresses, write this down. He addresses doubt. Number two is doubt. He will address doubt in your life. You see what happens that doubt affects your intellect. And so he will deal with the area of doubt. Doubt is your intellect. Doubt is in your mind. It's in your reasoning. You see, you have to understand that God can't work where there is doubt. If there's doubt in your mind, God can't work there. You see, God can only work where there is faith. God can only work when there is faith. Even if there is a little faith, God will work with that. Every single one of us have been given a measure of faith. But you have to understand that God will work with little faith because the Bible says faith as small as a mustard seed. There's power in small faith. As long as you have some level of faith, God is able to work in your life. But you have to understand that doubt, God can't work where there's doubt. If there's doubt in your mind, God can't work in that area. So it's time that you start to build your faith. It's time that you get into the word of God and you, and you raise up your faith levels because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word. Stop listening to the, what the world says. Stop listening to television and the news. It's good to know. It's very good to know. But you see, you can't fill yourself only with that. You've got to fill yourself with the Word of God. And as you begin to fill yourself with the Word of God, fill yourself with good preaching. Fill your, yourself with praise and worship. Start listening to praise and worship. Fill yourself with praise and worship, with the Word of God, with good preaching. And as you begin to do that, faith arises. Because you see, when you, in a, when you start to fill yourself with faith, what happens? There's a boldness. There's a confidence. You start to believe that your God is in control. You start to see that your God is in control. Because that's what faith is. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not yet seen you start to see the unseen even when you can't see you start to understand and know that your God is working behind the scenes Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 
Ephesians 1 and verse 17 says, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of His calling. This is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances, that He finds us His holy ones. See, the, what is the author saying? He says, I pray that your eyes be open. I pray that you be illuminated and your eyes be open. What he's saying is that we need to be illuminated. We need to get revelation. You see, the Holy Spirit will bring revelation. The Holy Spirit will open up your eyes. What will he open up your eyes? He will bring understanding of God's word. You see, as you read God's word, as you study God's word, ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to the mysteries of God's Word. And you will see as you read God's Word, as you study God's Word, you receive revelation. And even as you receive revelation, you will, you will start to experience greater faith in your life. Because what happens? You start to see how God sees. You start to look at a situation and you start to see how that God is in control. You start to see that God is in that situation. It reminds me about uh, Elisha and his servant and what Elisha did. Elisha said, uh, to, he said to God, God open his eyes so that he can see that there is more for us than that which is against us. And his eyes open and he starts to see the angelic beings, the heavenly beings uh, from heaven. And you see what happens. You start to see in the situation. You start to see that your God is bigger than any situation. You start to see that your God is bigger than your financial troubles, than the sickness in your body, than uh, maybe you lost your job, maybe your business is experiencing some challenges. You start to see that your God is in control. Control. You start to see that your God is right there in the midst of what you are faced with. 1 John chapter, sorry, John chapter 16 and verse 13 says this. But when the truth giving spirit comes, he will unveil the reality of every truth within you. He won't speak on his own, but only what he hears from the Father, and He will reveal prophetically to you what is to come. He will glorify me on the earth, for He will, re for he will receive from me what is mine and reveal it to you. Everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. That's why I say that the divine encourager will receive what is mine and reveal it to you soon you won't see me any longer but then after a while after a little while you will see me in a new day you see the holy spirit when he comes he directs us to the father you see he only will give us he will only reveal to us what the father is saying the holy spirit is there to point us to the father how of you ever uh, met someone and they're so puffed up? They're always talking about who they know, what they know. They're always talking about uh, who they've been with. You see, they, they're so puffed up. The Holy Spirit is not like that. The Holy Spirit, He wants to only reveal us to the Father. He wants to only reveal the Father to us. He wants to only reveal what the Father is speaking to you and I. He wants to reveal that to us so that you and I, we can know what God thinks about us. We can know what God is saying to us in the season. We can know what God is saying to us in every situation, in everything that we are faced with. I love that the Holy Spirit, He doesn't reveal to us His own agenda. The Holy Spirit is always revealing to us the agenda of God. He's revealing the agenda of the Father to you and I. You see, the Holy Spirit, He starts to deal with doubt in our lives. And so what He does, 
as He reveals who the Father is, as He opens our eyes, as He brings illumination and revelation, He starts to deal with doubt in our minds. Because what happens? We start to see who our God is, and we start to see how great our God is, and we start to see God's Word in a different way. And so what happens? Faith arises, and as faith arises, faith will kill the doubt in your life, and God is, uh, God is able to operate where there is faith in your life. In your life, the Holy Spirit knows what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit knows the future. So sometimes what happens? We have doubt because we don't know the future. We can't see what's going to happen in the future. But you see what happens? The Holy Spirit will bring a prophetic sense in your life. The Holy Spirit will bring a prophetic sense in your life so that you, uh, you know what's going to happen and what will take place in your life. You know, I've, I've, had, I've experienced many times where I've come into the presence of a prophet and the prophet will start to speak the future. And what happens there? The reason why I'm able to align myself with what the prophet is saying is because the Holy Spirit has first revealed it to me. If the Holy Spirit has not revealed it to me, then I take the prophecy and I will put it on a shelf until God starts to speak about it to me. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. But when a prophet speaks and God has already spoken to me and God has already revealed it to me, then it's confirmation in my life. And you see the Holy Spirit, what He does, He'll start to show you the future. He'll start to show you what God is saying to you. You don't have to look for a prophet. You don't have to look for a prophetic word. What happens that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what God is saying for your life, what God has in store for your life. And so what happens when, when things come into your life, you will know what is of God and what is not of God. When, when promotion comes, when a job comes, you will know whether to take the job or not to take the job because you will know what God is saying for your life. We need a prophetic edge in our lives and the Holy Spirit will bring that prophetic edge in your life. How does He do it? He does it through revelation. He will start to speak God's agenda into your life. And so what happens? He deals with doubt. The Holy Spirit will address the area of doubt in your life. If He can address the area of doubt, He can address your intellect. He can address your mind. And so what happens? You start to have a strong mind. You start to have a mind that is full, with, with, uh, full of faith, full of belief, full of confidence, knowing who your God is. My final point for today is write this down. Number three. Let me show you who God is in a new way. I love this. He's He's dealt with fear, he's dealt with doubt. And the third thing, write this down, is inner turmoil. The Holy Spirit will come and he will address inner turmoil. He will address devastation inside of you. He will address issues in your life. Maybe you have gone through post-traumatic stress disorder. Maybe you have gone through a tra traumatic event. Maybe you have been abused as a child or growing up. Maybe you have experienced both physical abuse, abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse. Maybe you have experienced trauma in your growing up and in your life. But the Holy Spirit, He'll come and He'll bring healing in that area. He will bring healing inside of you. He will come and deal with the inner turmoil in your life. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 19 says this, from the west to the lands, and I'm reading this in the, in the Passion Translation. It says, from the west to the lands of the rising sun, the glory and the name of Yahweh will be held in highest reverence, for He will break in as a flooding, rushing river, driven on by the breath of Yahweh. He breaks in, and how does he come in? He comes in like a rushing, flooding stream, like a rushing, flooding river. Whatever you are faced with in your life, 
all of a sudden, and I, I want to speak this and declare this over your life. Every person that's tuning in right now, every person that's watching right now, I'm believing that, that, that right now the Holy Spirit is coming like a rushing river over your life, over your heart right now. Right now, the Holy Spirit is coming as He's flooding your life right now with His presence. He's flooding every area of your life. He's dealing with the area of fear. He's dealing with the area of doubt. He's dealing with every inner turmoil inside of you. Maybe you feel like you are unwanted. Maybe you feel like you are worthless. Right now, the Holy Spirit is dealing with that area. Right now, you're experiencing the love of God in your life. Right now, He's overwhelming your life with His presence right now. Just begin to receive it as I speak it over your life right now. The Holy Spirit is flooding your life in Jesus' name. Just allow Him to come upon your life right now. Just surrender to Him. Just receive the Holy Spirit over your life. He's dealing with every turmoil in your life right now. Every inner turmoil. Whatever you have experienced in your life right now. Every traumatic experience. Every bit of pain, hurt, and bitterness. Every bit of uh, whatever you have experienced growing up even in your childhood. Right now He's dealing with that area. Just release it to the Holy Spirit. Just release it. Surrender it right now to Him. God is dealing with it in your life right now through the power of His Holy Spirit. You see the Holy Spirit... He doesn't just come tiptoeing. He doesn't just come. Uh, he just. He doesn't just come. You know, like he is is tiptoeing, uh, tiptoeing through the tulips. The Holy Spirit comes and he invades your life with his presence. The Holy Spirit comes and he, he comes like a flood, a rushing wind, a rushing river over your life. The breath of Yahweh comes upon your life. He comes and he invades your life with his presence and he starts with, to deal with every pain, every hurt over your life like a rushing river. I be, I'm believing right now that the Holy Spirit is coming upon your life and he's dealing with the pain and the hurt in your life. Whatever you have experienced, God is turning thing, things right now. He's turning that pain around. His love is flooding your life right now in the name of Jesus. Mark chapter 4 and verse 39, Mark 34 and verse 39 says, my last scripture for today, and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is a story about some guys that were on a boat. Jesus' disciples. They were with Jesus on the boat and Jesus was fast asleep. And there was a great storm. There was a, the storm was so crazy, so great. And they were asking, where is Jesus? Maybe you feel like, like that today. You feel like, where is Jesus in this pandemic? Where is Jesus in your struggle, in your financial struggle, in your marriage? Where is Jesus regarding your kids? Where is Jesus regarding your business? Where is Jesus? The disciples, they want to know, Jesus, get up. Where are you? Where is Jesus in the storm? It is so crazy. What happens? Jesus gets up and he says, Three very powerful words. Peace be still. Today I want to say that God is saying those words over your life. Peace be still. Just allow the peace of God to come upon your life. Just be still and know that God is in control. Know that God is in control over every situation, over every challenge in your life, over every struggle right now. God is in control. Just allow His peace to come upon your life. Know that He is dealing with whatever challenge you are faced with right now. Jesus, what he does, first he deals with the storm. He says, peace be still. And the next thing, they are so afraid because they realize that this is the Son of God. But they were afraid of the storm. And so what he did, he, he dealt with the storm. And the next thing he dealt with, their unbelief. You see, you've got to deal with your unbelief today. 
You've got to believe that God is going to bring that inner healing. God is going to deal with that inner turmoil inside of you. You have to believe that for your life today. You have to say, God, I'm trusting you. And I know you're going to come through for me. I know my breakthrough is around the corner. God, I know my miracle is about to visit me in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you believe that today, say amen. Declare that over your life. Receive your miracle today. Receive your breakthrough today. Take hold of the promises that God has for your life. You can't allow fear to dictate to you. You can't allow doubt to come upon your mind. You can't allow all that inner inner struggle and that inner turmoil to dictate to your future. You're going to say, God, today I put my full trust in you and I believe that you are in control and I believe that you are going to do the miracle that you promised over my life. You've got to stand on God's promises. Stand on His Word and say, God, today is my breakthrough. Today is the day of my miracle. Today is a day where I am going to experience a visitation like never did before. You've got to believe that over your life today. Don't allow doubt. Don't allow doubt and fear to, to invade your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to come in and allow Him to deal with every area. God has sent His Spirit to empower you. God has sent His Spirit to live inside of you so that you can live a life with the authority of God. You can live a life empowered by God. You can live a life full of God's presence. Won't you close your eyes today as, as we're going to pray? I want you to believe today that the Holy Spirit is going to come and He's going to do a supernatural work in your life today. Let us pray. Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you today, Father, even as we have heard your word. And Lord, even today, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit that ministers to us. Your Holy Spirit that's working inside of our lives. We thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon every single one of us. Holy Spirit, come and work inside of us. Holy Spirit, come and deal with every bit of fear, every bit of doubt, every turmoil that's inside of us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, right now. You are dealing with it. You are removing it right now. Every bit of fear goes right now in the name of Jesus. Every bit of doubt goes right now in the name of of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for inner healing right now, that every bit of chaos is turning around inside of us. Lord, I thank you right now over every person that's tuning in. You are doing a special work. Just begin to receive it right now. Just begin to receive the working of the Holy Spirit in your life right now. The Holy Spirit is working in your life. Just lift up your hands towards heaven and just begin to receive the presence of God. Just begin to receive the Holy Spirit. Just declare the Holy Spirit working in your life right now. Ask Him, speak to Him. Ask Him to work inside of you. Ask Him to remove the fear. Ask Him to remove Remove the doubt. Ask Him to empower you. Ask Him to ignite His, His presence inside of you. Ask Him to come and do something fresh. Ask Him to, to just fill your life with the fire of His presence today. Just experience His presence right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that you are doing a miraculous work in Jesus' mighty and holy name. And everyone said, I don't want to close today's service without giving someone an opportunity to ask Jesus to come into your life and be Lord and Savior of your life. Today you have heard God's word. And you have to understand that until we ask Jesus to come into our lives, we'll never experience the, the power of the Holy Spirit. We'll never experience everything that God has for us through His Spirit that was sent for you and I. So I want to give you an opportunity today to make that decision, to ask Jesus to come and be Lord and Savior of your life. The second opportunity I want to give you today is maybe some point in your life you did make that decision, but along the way, it seems like you lost your way and you just drifted far away from the things of God. And you just seems like you're doing your own thing. You're far away from God. It seems like God is nowhere near you. So I want to encourage you today. I want to give you that opportunity to make that decision. Rededicate your life to Jesus. Ask Jesus to come back and be Lord and Savior of your life once again. 
so that the Holy Spirit can work in your life. And so I'm speaking to, to two types of people. The first, first opportunity is if you've never made that decision before. And the second is if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to ask you to lift up your hands nice and high. And then I'm going to pray for you wherever you are. I count one, Jesus loves you. I count two, don't worry about the person next to you, behind you, in front of you. I count three, just lift up your hands towards heaven and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to say a simple prayer and I want you to repeat that prayer after me today. Let us pray. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that you forgive me of every sin and every unrighteousness in my life. Lord Jesus, wash me and cleanse me by your blood. Lord, today I ask that you come and that you live inside of me by the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, that today I am a child of God. And everyone said, Amen. Congratulations in your decision today. And I want to encourage you to keep on going strong in the Lord. I want to encourage you with three things today. If you have a Bible, read your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we'll gladly send one to you via career. There's a number at the bottom of the screen, uh, a WhatsApp number, a telephone number, and an email address. Write to us, contact us. We'll gladly send one to you. We'd like to, we'd like to connect with you and, and to help you in this journey as well. The second thing I want to ask you today is find a good Christian friend, someone that is spirit-filled, someone that is filled with the Word of God, walk with them in this journey so they can help you. You've got to understand that when you're with strong people, you will keep strong. And the third thing I want to encourage you is find a local church that you can belong to. Wherever you are, find a Bible-based, Holy Spirit-filled church that you can be part of, you can be connected with. The Bible says that they that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. So I want to encourage you to get planted. If you're in the Peter Marisburg area and you don't have a church that you call home, you're welcome to come visit us when we do open church in the near future. Come and say hi when you do come and visit. Let us pray before we close the service. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your presence today. I thank you, Lord, that you minister to every single one of us. Thank you, Lord, for your favor that's ever increasing. Lord, I declare that surely your goodness, your mercy, your peace, your kindness, your love shall follow us all the days of our lives. Lord, I thank you for showing up so powerfully once again today. Lord, I ask may your face shine upon us. May your countenance be upon us. Lead us in every way in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that you were tremendously blessed. Please check us out on Facebook and on our fan page. Like our fan page. Check, check us out on our YouTube channel, Urban Light Church. You can subscribe to our channel so you can get the latest videos. Always check out our website at urbanchurch.co.za. Connect with us. Say hi. We would be glad to meet you. God bless you. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in with Urban Light Church Online. We hope that you were encouraged and inspired. Please do contact us if you require any information and be sure to stay in the loop by following us on social media. Have a blessed week ahead.